Hello folks, this is Vector Tiles Part 2. We are going to take our own data, and it's going to be tax parcels from Mecklenburg County, North Carolina, and transform those into vector tiles, and then fling them at a web browser, and the web browser is going to draw those suckers. Now, I had said in the first video I was going to do that and styling as well. I'm going to make a third video and push styling onto it, because styling gets kind of complicated and I didn't want this to troll on for too long. So let's talk about the vector tile format we're using. There are different types of vector tile formats. It's really anything in a tile that is a vector format. The most common ones are GeoJSON, TopoJSON, and protocol buffers or protobuf or the .pbf extension. Of the three, protobuf is really looking like the winner. It's a binary format. It's very simple. It's very, very small. And it's very fast for software to work with. And, of course, Mapbox is a... I mean, they designed the whole spec and, and, and adopted it. But Esri is adopting the whole Mapbox uh, protobuf spec and the Mapbox GL client. So protobuf is kind of one to mind share as well. So that's the format we're going to be transforming our stuff into and serving up. Now there's, just like with raster tiles or, or whatever, you can either serve stuff up live. In other words, it comes out of your database, gets transformed into whatever format you need, and then flung in a web browser. Or you can pre-make those tiles. We're going to talk about doing both here. First, let's talk about pre-making those tiles. There are different ways to take GIS data and turn it into vector tiles. One of the common ways suggested is to use Mapbox Studio Classic. That's something I very highly don't recommend. Uh, I'm not... I, lo I love Mapbox, but that's Mapbox Studio Classic is is not one of my favorite things. It's really the exporting vector tiles from it is really kind of a afterthought. It's really meant to be styling, designed to style in Cardo CSS, which is for Mapnik, which is for making raster tiles. It's just using vectors as the source for it. So it's not really designed to do just that, and it's kind of slow, and it's kind of not what I recommend. What I recommend is another Mapbox command line tool called Tippy Canoe. Tippy Canoe, I usually don't recommend things that don't run on every platform because I know some small percentage of people in the world still run Windows. It's more than 5%, I think. But... Tippecanoe is so good, if you run Windows, you need to install VirtualBox and install Ubuntu Server or something and run Tippecanoe. I'll show you how good this thing is. We've got like, I've got like three different servers running and like a, like a Postgres server running a VM. I got stuff running everywhere. We're going to go into this Tippecanoe folder. According to the Mapbox page, and I'll link to all this stuff in the show notes in the blog post, it really only has one dependency. It, it's, a, it's a compiled C program. The only dependency they have here is Goodle. On their uh, GitHub page, they mentioned some other dependencies as well. Uh, but I didn't need any of this. I just had Goodle installed already from QGIS and just ran make and it just made. So I think all you need is Goodle. And you just download the Git repository and do make and it makes your typical new. Let me get, let's see, make this bigger for you. We are going to take Tippecanoe it has a lot of different uh, you know, command line options you can read about. It takes GeoJSON and converts it into 
protobuf in a MB tiles file. So you'll use Ogre or whatever to convert your data to GeoJSON. And then Tippecanoe will run on that. And it's just amazing. The, uh, let's see. The parcels, uh, GeoJSON file is 373 megabytes. It is about 340,000 polygons. So let's see here. We'll, I, I, I'm just gonna copy this command so you don't have to see me mucking around with this. Uh, what we're doing here is we're going to canoe and we're saying, uh, Max zoom level 14. We really only want 14 for these parcels. I'm not drawing it at 14. I'm not drawing it really till I hit zoom level 16. But 14 is the highest level of detail we need from the features. So that's what you want to, to uh, build your tiles at. So this dash X option is just removing fields. It's all it's doing. I'm removing every field but the parcel ID and this dash F is telling you to overwrite the file. It's all there. There's my output, parcels, diamond tiles, and there's the JSON file it's reading. Now, now let's, let's, let's watch this. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. I'm not, I'm, I'm just counting my fingers now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and maybe 15 to 17 seconds it just took that giant file with 340 ish thousand polygons and it's done we have our stuff made made this parcels enemy tiles 8.7 megabytes that's how tiny that sucker is so it took our gigantic JSON file and did all of our vector tiling and made this MB tiles file that's really tiny in 15, 17 seconds. That's why I say Tippy Canoe is worth going ahead and if you're on Windows, installing just a, a Linux VM so, so you can run Tippy Canoe. So we've just copied that parcel MB tiles file to our tile server that we we're using last time and we will draw that stuff. Let's see, where did I put this? All right. Well, before I show you that, we'll just go back out and let's see, where do I have, here we go. How you add this stuff to your style file. So we have this bright parcels V8. This is just the bright theme I added parcels to. We're adding a second source and we're calling it parcels type vector and we're giving it uh, essentially the same, it's the same server we're using for the United States of America OSM, just a different MB tiles file in that folder. We're sending a max zoom and a min zoom because I don't want it fetching tiles anywhere other than zoom level 14. So that's fetching tiles, we have to style them. And again, we'll do a lot of talk about styles next time. But down here at the bottom, I just added this text parcels type. It's a line, we don't wanna fill it in in this case. A source is gonna be parcels and our source layer, we made this from, and that's taking it from the name of the JSON file, is parcels. Min zoom 15, and we're just going to make green lines. So that's it. We just added another source for that MB tiles file we just made and a little bit of styling. So now when we go to bright with parcels, this is not going to draw anything yet. As we get past 15, see how fast these draw as well. Those green lines, hopefully you can see that might need to make your YouTube video full screen. Those are the tax parcels. Yes, our tax parcels sometimes fall on top of buildings. Don't ask. And back turned off, zoomed in. There they are. Super fast. Our data right on top. So 
How easy was that? Tip and Canoe is really what I would recommend for pre-caching vector tiles. But what if you want to draw stuff live, either because you don't want to have to bother refreshing MB tiles file and running Tip and Canoe on a schedule, or there's stuff that just changes a lot. For whatever reason, you want to run tiles live. I ran across a really good post, and full credit to uh, Frank Rowe, he kind of did a meta coding of how you would take uh, Postgres, PostGIS data and make a vector tile and serve it on the fly. So I took that and I flushed it out and made this new repository and I'll, I'll link to it. It's really rough at this point. I'm going to be making it prettier, probably. I say that about everything I, I usually don't, but I, should, I will probably make it better. Let's see, I've got that somewhere. Yeah, so we're on the other screen. Basically, we're just getting some stuff. Uh, uh, the real thing that's working for us here is, is MapNick. Well, we are going to get, we're going to take a ZXY request and we're gonna use the spherical Mercator library to turn that into a bounding box. Then we're going to make a SQL call to, to Postgres, and we're going to uh, basically get everything that falls across that bounding box back as GeoJSON. And this query is one I got uh, from, yeah, from over here from Leo and uh, Regina by their books. Cha -ching. And it's just making instead of a whole, you know, bunch of records, it's just making one one fully capable, fully done uh, GeoJSON file. So we're getting that back, and then when we get it back, we are well starting down here. We're making a MapNick vector tile for that particular. Uh, Z, X, and Y. And then we are getting that GeoJSON. Once we get the GeoJSON, we can add that GeoJSON to the vector tile, and we're giving it uh, the name, in this case, the table that was passed, so parcels. And then we're gzipping it, because these need to be gzipped, and sending it out to the client. So that's what's going on. Uh, go back to over here. That's what's going on with this Bright Parcels Live V8. All that's changed here is the source is slightly different. See, we're sending this parcel argument to a different node server. And the styling is exactly the same. So we can go back to our little funky thing and go bright lines with parcels. And there's parcels being served live, live from PostGIS. Uh, the and, and it works well. Uh, the only thing is it's, of course, it's quite a bit slower drawing it live. And that's all in the MapNick encoding end. PostGIS will actually return this query pretty quick. 334,000 parcels, pardon me. See, it's, it's returning that in 82 milliseconds. And that's returning the GeoJSON. And that's running on a little VM I have with, I gave like one gig of RAM. So that's running very quick. The delay is in the, in the MapNIC. I don't think it's in the Zlib and Coney. I think it's just MapNIC. So let's go to our network sources and we will just filter out things with parcel in them. So let's, Go over here. You'll see it fetch these two tiles, and it's doing these, of course, concurrently, but it's uh, or asynchronously. It's doing that in five milliseconds for our live stuff. Now let me clear that out so it's easier to see. For our live stuff, it's more like 
oh, 300 to 400 milliseconds. I've seen it as high as 800 milliseconds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's certainly a lot more than like five or six milliseconds. So you're paying a penalty in terms of performance from getting that stuff live from PostGIS, but you can do it. And once you get it, you can style it. Remember, because we're just getting for zoom level 14, once we zoom in from here, oh, I've got disabled cache. Let me see here. And once you get those tiles at zoom level 14 and zoom in all the way down to look right up your, you know, right up your nose, you're not having to fetch any more of those parcel tiles. So it's not super bad, but you are paying a performance penalty. Now that library or that GitHub repo is fairly rough. You could probably find ways to crash it. I wouldn't put it in production yet. It's just kind of a proof of concept. The other thing you could do uh, with this tile server, which I might do, is add a, a server-side caching component like Redis or Mongo or, or something. That way it's not having to keep making those tiles all the time. It'd be kind of like a your very own cache on the fly. So that is taking your own data and either serving it live or pre-caching it and serving those vectors out and showing them on a map. Next time we're going to look at styling. And styling will be, I guess I'm looking forward to that. The more I looked into styling, the more complicated things became. There are different clients. This vector tile is just coming out as a, as a protobuf file. How you style it from there is entirely dependent on the client. Now Mapbox GL uses their own Mapbox GL styling, which is totally different from how they did raster tiling. And now I'm getting into the next video, so I'm just gonna shut up. So next time we'll look at styling and then you should be all just crazy good to go on vector tiles and you can leave raster tiles sitting in the dust. All right, bye-bye.